Okay, um, I've got my eye protection here and that's ready for safety, pulling those out of the tool trolley. I've got my eye protection, put that on right away so that I know I'm safe. We've got all our tools laid out and I'm going to take you through each one of these tools and how to use them properly uh, so they gain building that confidence so that you know uh, uh, how to show your students how to do them properly as well. Um, I think I've got a hairband here as well, so whenever we're using around, uh, if we've got long, whole, uh, long hair, obviously I don't have that issue. Um, we can put that out just so your hair is tied back, uh, any jewelry is off, any watches are taken off. So I'm going to take my watch off as well, make sure I don't lose that. And so that uh, nothing's in the way from uh, distracting us or even hurting us or things getting caught. So I could share some stories with you, but those are for another day uh, and time. So uh, with this, we, we're going to start with the cordless tools that we have. Um, we've got a cordless drill here, um, and obviously it has a speed little limit on the side. That's one and two. This is sort of a slower speed, and that's a faster speed. So um, I would always suggest, depending on the size of the drill bit that you're using, uh, depending on the speed that you need, uh, I would just keep it on the number two, um, just because a lot of the drill bits you'll be using are actually are smaller, and you'll need some a faster speed drill to, to make them work. Um, there's also a little setting here, uh, and that's on the drill, so that most of, these, most of the time with this, uh, this drill we'll be actually drilling holes with a, with a, a, a drill bit. Um, and there's a little setting here that has a drill on it. Um, and then different speeds, uh, or different, um, not, I shouldn't say speeds, but different settings depending on the depth of the uh, um, uh, maybe bit that you're using uh, to, to fasten a screw in. But at this point, all we're going to be using is just the drill bit, the drill point. So it always has the full power in order to do what it needs to do. It won't stop and, and it's like a clutch that's on a car. Same idea, it sort of removes the power from the drill and goes from there. Um, now the battery pack on the drill slides off and on like this. And whenever we're changing bits on any of these drills, we're always removing the battery pack. I've got a drill bit here. This happens to be a quarter inch drill bit. I'm gonna put that drill into the drill. I'm gonna fasten that by hand. So as I fasten it, it's going to turn it right to tighten it, left to loosen it. So right to tighten it, that's at that point, I can put the drill back in, and then, uh, the, I should say the, the battery back in, and then I can use this to, to operate the drill. Now if you look at, closely at the side of this drill, there's actually a button that goes back and forth, and that is for the reverse function of that drill and the forward function. So if you get, start using these tools and start getting used to them, if you start to drill a hole and the drill bit really doesn't look like it's doing anything, it means that the drill bit's in the reverse function and you want it to go in the forward function so that it actually does start to drill uh, and, and to actually make a hole. So uh, it will not drill in reverse. Uh, it is not meant for that and that's what happens. So that is the drill. And again, whenever we're changing drill bits or anything like that, we're always removing the battery. We'll loosen that off. We have that drill bit there and away we go. Now as for the impact driver, this is mainly meant for putting screws or fastening something down for two pieces of wood. Uh, and again, that's the same idea. If, if we're changing bits on this, this happens to be a Robertson bit. And the bit goes in like this, and it goes on like that, and that won't hold in there until you pull the sleeve back and then push it down. And then it holds it and secures it in place so it doesn't move. Same idea. We're gonna put this in, battery in, and then now we can operate the impact driver. And that's the one in the right side. If we flip it the other way, it'll come out. This is a little easier to see if we're actually taking, putting a screw into a, into a piece of wood and taking it out. Now obviously you're not gonna be able to take it out if you're always in the forward motion. You have to actually be in the reverse motion. Um, and that is the cordless tool. So that's an impact driver. And this is a drill. So for drilling holes, always making sure again, once again, we're moving any jewelry, any watches, anything loose clothing, uh, tying your hair back and making sure that we're always safe um, and going from there. Next we've got some clamps. These are adjustable clamps. So these clamps go back and forth and tighten back and forth and we'll be getting into a little more details of this but it slides back and forth with this little reverse function when we talk about sawing because these are the clamps that we'll be needing uh, in order to uh, hold our material down while we're sawing pieces of material. Same thing, this is a little bar clamp, or what's called F clamp, because it looks like just like the letter F. Uh, and the idea is that it rotates back and forth and moves back and forth for that. And that's a four inch bar clamp, and this is a 12 inch adjustable clamp. We're gonna go to our hammer here. That's a little Stanley hammer. We're not being sponsored by Stanley, but this would be pretty cool, all right? And so that we have our hammer here, 
And most students want to hold the hammer like this when they're hammering, but there's not a lot of leverage there when they're doing that. So they always want to hold the hammer at the back of the handle. And you can even put your index finger at the end as you're hammering. It helps start, if you're hammering a nail into a piece of wood, it helps sort of get it going. Then you can remove that and actually hit it in. So just so it helps align and set the nail, it's a lot easier to actually control where the hammer's going. And it gives you a little more direction. Hammers are never meant to be hit against each other. Uh, that's a no-no. and We don't want that to happen. So we want to, want to make sure that hammer, the only thing a hammer is meant for is hammering a nail into a piece of wood, all right? Um, and then the claw side of the hammer on the back side is for removing nails if one goes in sideways. We've got what's called a speed square. This is an excellent tool for measuring uh, 90 degree angles or laying out 90 degree angles, as well as 45 degree angles. Uh, and again, it's got a little lip to the edge of it, so you can actually slip it up to a piece of wood. All right, so as I go to do some cutting, I'll actually demonstrate that so it's a little easier to see. Um, and so we can focus the camera in on that, uh, that section and go from there. On uh, this little guy here is a tape measure. So we have a tape measure that's in not only in metric at the bottom, but it's also in inches. Uh, so you can actually compare both those measurements. And one of the biggest things that uh, uh, kids really struggle with is measurement and understanding the, the layout of the measurement and knowing how things should be measured and, and uh, where to measure it to. So this is great practice when they start this at this age uh, before they get up to the high school level um, and uh, to give them more practice. Uh, and again, tape measures should never be uh, let go fast. You should just let them go nice and slowly and let the tab go back. And then this little tab here actually moves back and forth and it's meant to do that. So um, uh, I've, I've had students in the past that have actually hammered that down. And I said, well, I fixed the tape measure, Mr. Blessick. And I said, no, you didn't. So let's make sure that that uh, this always moves back and forth. And it's meant to actually adjust for that thickness of material when you're measuring inside and outside holes. Um, and that's what that is there for. So again, that's the tape measure. Most people will see, have seen one of those before. Again, we talk about this as a handsaw. Uh, again, we, got, we keep a little cover on it so that uh, it, it protects the saw, uh, to protect the sharp uh, tooth of the saw. And we're gonna do a little more of a demonstration on our next video on this, on, on how to cut property. But again, holding the saw uh, with one hand if you're left or right-handed. And again, when you're moving the sleeve, just making it so that uh, you're always sort of pushing the pressure on the top so you, you don't have to cut through the bottom of that sleeve. Uh, this is a coping saw. Uh, and again, it's just another type of saw that we can use and it's mainly more not for necessarily cutting straight lines, but for actually cutting around corners. So for cutting curves, uh, for cutting uh, uh, inside uh, holes um, and making them bigger, because uh, this saw can actually adjust and, and actually uh, come out and fit through a hole. Um, it's a great tool for, uh, um, for making designs that not necessarily, aren't necessarily straight. Um, we've got some needle nose pliers. Again, these are a little pointy. They've got actually a little cutting device on the end. And they're great for uh, uh, basically mo uh, moving wire around, uh, holding pieces together. Um, and again, they're a great tool as well. Um, uh, for any type of use where you're working with wire uh, and it's it's uh, it's great for that or even pulling nails out um, Screwdrivers, so there's all sorts of screwdrivers that we have in the tool trolley uh, These two are right particularly this is a Phillips screwdriver the smaller one and this is obviously a blade screwdriver uh, Again, but one of the important things about about use the just the use of tools of screwdrivers is always holding that handle and holding it down as you're walking through the classroom just to make sure that you're not holding like that if you trip and fall uh, it could injure someone, so we're always holding that, that part down so it's out of the way uh, as we're walking through the, the classroom uh, and then into the area that we're working. Uh, we've got some files here, uh, and these are actually a little, sort of a combination between wood and, and metal files. Um, and again, they're smaller files. Uh, this is, happens to be a single cut file just because of the way the lines are going. But as well, the important part of this is making sure that the handle always remains on the file and it doesn't come off. There's a little tang at the end of that. And when the handles do come off, uh, using a file without a handle can be very dangerous uh, and it can actually in, and, uh, impact your hand uh, if you're not filing in the right direction or, uh, or it gets caught. So always use a file with a handle on it. Uh, and again, there's uh, three files in this particular case, a flat, uh, obviously a single cut flat file along with uh, a round file. And I think there's, a, I believe, a double cut file in there as well. Uh, glue guns, most people have uh, used these before, but just to make sure that uh, 
Um, they're in a sort of a designated area. I, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about stations that we talked about before. Um, but again, making sure that if you do get glue on you, uh, or the students do get glue on themselves, to make sure that they're running their, their, their hand under cold water for at least 10 minutes, uh, not trying to peel off the glue right away, uh, because it burns and obviously these tips get really hot. Uh, and making sure that, uh, again, they're sort of in an area that uh, uh, is quite visible, um, and so that no one gets hurt. Sanding blocks. This is a little foam sanding block, and it's really easy to use in terms of that. Just making sure that uh, these actually have a little Velcro backing on the back side. There really is no direction when you put these on, but just making sure that they sit flat to the sanding block, they get completely pushed down so they don't remove off it. And again, when we talk about sanding material, we're, and especially specifically wood, we're always sanding with the grain. Uh, and again, I'll talk a little bit about in that cutting demonstration. We're here at the measuring station where we're actually going to cut this piece of one by one to a length of seven and a half inches. So using that tape measure, we're gonna go across, make a mark at seven and a half inches, and then we're gonna use a speed square to draw a straight line. Now in order to do that, there's actually a little lip on the, on the back of this speed square on both sides that actually goes up against the wood, and I'm gonna lift that up so you can see that a little bit easier on the camera. And you can see that uh, that little lip is actually on the edge of that material. So when I put it down, I can draw a nice straight line and so that I can make a nice straight cut. So as you can see, that little line is there now and I can make a nice cut along that piece of one by one. This is what's called a bench hook. Now that bench hook, this would be considered a sawing station. So you'd always have a little measuring station, sawing station, as well as that drilling station that we had done. Um, and it has a little back part to the end. You can see that it actually goes up against the bench. Now this is really designed so you actually don't need a clamp, but I find it easier to use with the clamp. Uh, and as you go off to the edge, we can use our little bar clamp here. Now in most cases, this might be a little easier to clamp this way, so you can actually see the actual handle as far as we can. And again, we want to turn it so that it turns nice and tight up against the material. I also notice that this is just off the table a little bit. That's exactly what I want it to do. Our piece of material goes in here and it can be right up against the edge there not too far out, but close to the edge of this piece of material. And we can actually clamp this material down too as well. We, we never want to try to hold our hands any closer than two inches from the material. So if that clamp is there, I can tell you that two inches is about 50 millimeters. My hand is well off two inches from the saw. And then that's the next part. So we'll take our saw, taking that sleeve off again. Again, try to hold in that sleeve so it's pointed down so we, we keep that sleeve there. And again, holding it in one hand, right up against that line. You're going to put your feet shoulder width apart, find that line. Again, my hand is two inches away from the saw. And again, I can start that cut just by doing a little back saw, just so it creates a nice little line. And then it creates a nice little line as I cut across. So, And again, I don't have to go too fast, don't have to go too slow. Just perfect. And then again, it'll cut nice and flat and shimmer me timbers. I'm just going to take you through a drilling demonstration. And to do that, whenever we drill anything, we always want to make sure we clamp things down. As well as if we're sawing anything, we want to clamp it down. Um, and to do that, this is an adjustable clamp. Uh, this little release on the back will actually make the clamp go back and forth depending on the width of what you're clamping down needs to be done. And this little handle here, as you squeeze it, will actually squeeze and tight and, and, and clamp that material down. I've got a little spot here where I'm going to drill a little 1 8 hole in this wood. I've also got a piece of 2x4 underneath so I don't drill into my table. And the 2x4 is meant to be a sacrificial piece of wood so that uh, I drill into the 2x4. So to start that process, I'm going to adjust this so I can clamp it down to the table and making sure it's nice and tight, close to the area that I'm actually going to drill. Now I'm going to use a second clamp as well, just to make sure that this doesn't move around. As you can see, it moves around a little bit, and we don't want that to happen. The other thing I'm going to make sure is I don't know, I always want to try to, if I can, in most cases, in some cases you can't, but making sure that I always have the bar pointed down so it doesn't uh, poke you in the eye while you're trying to drill something uh, and injure yourself. So we've got that clamped, this is clamped, it's nice and secure. We're going to take my uh, drill 
Obviously, I would have that bit, taken the battery off to do that. It's on my drill section. It's number two. It's a fairly small drill bit, so I want to make sure that it's going to go into that spot. I can locate the hole, have one hand on the top of the drill, and then pull the trigger. If it doesn't start to drill, it's obviously in reverse, but if it starts to drill right away, it will be in the forward motion. You don't have to go too fast and come back in a reverse section. You can see it's coming out and then back in that forward motion again and then back again. So what you'll see is that hole now is done. So I went in reverse so it actually helps bring the bit out. So in the forward motion and then in the reverse motion, you can click the, the drill in the reverse motion. And then again, you don't need to put as much pressure on this. Obviously you want it to come out. So you're just basically holding the top of the drill and letting it come out the top of the wood. Along with the bench hook that we just used, we can also use a miter box that can actually cut uh, angles at 45 degrees using a miter saw. And we can also use the mini saw, that sharp tooth saw that we were using earlier too as well. So if we draw a line at 45 degrees. Again, always drawing a line. You always need to draw a line you need to cut to using that set square. You know, holding that's a nice 45. I'm gonna make that cut. Using a clamp, clamping that down properly. And again, I can just kind of clamp it onto that piece, making sure it's in the right spot. It's not going to move anywhere. And I can jiggle it back and forth to make sure it's good. Again, using that miter saw, holding it at the top of the saw, pushing down along that line, making sure that your shoulder width apart, kind of have your hands two inches away from the material as far as away as you can. Even you can kind of even put your hand on the clamp. And again, we can start that process. Now, in some cases, when you're going to clamp, when you're going to, to, to do that, you might just have to adjust the clamp a little bit so the piece actually sits nice and flat up against the miter box. We can also use our other saw in this miter box as well. So that if there's if you're having problems holding that miter saw, sometimes it's a bit easier to clamp this down, make that adjustment, and as well make the cut. So as I'm cutting along, as you can see, the piece of material is going. It's a little bit tricky at the back side. And as I come through the side, you can hear, actually hear the change in the material. And you might have to, at some point, even flip the saw over to the other saw. So that it cuts all the way through. And then as it cuts all the way through, this piece comes out, clamp goes back, and again, you have your perfect 45 degree cut. Well, thank you for following along. That was a great opportunity to, to, to show you how to use the tools properly uh, and safely and for you to, to build that confidence to, to show your students. Uh, part of the next process is uh, doing an online safety quiz. So once that quiz is complete, we'll have a record of that at the Pathways and Partnerships Office as well as your school principals will be notified and you'll as well get a certificate saying that you've completed the safety training. So with that in mind, that we really want to make sure we follow the proper processes so that we complete the training with you uh, and that we, we, you go through that, the channel of us teaching you uh, instead of you training other teachers to make sure that uh, you've seen it and done it properly in a safe, uh, and, uh, uh, in a safe manner uh, so that you can show the students the proper way. Um, so we just want to make sure that process follows uh, through by watching this safety video. Uh, and then and then the ones to come like the drill press so we will be doing a separate drill press video with a safety quiz as well that should be done uh, before you can operate and use the drill press properly so uh, thank you very much again and uh, happy building with your students we're excited to see some of the projects that come along